So the question is, I said that Tutu Atwell is too short to play uh, quarterback at the college level. I didn't say at Miami. I said at the college level, period. So let's get that first of all straight. I didn't, I uh, didn't focus or center Miami in that conversation. That was a general statement. And then he says, now uh, we have Dear King, and they're about the same height. Dear King is five ten and a half. Tutu Atwell is five seven, five eight maybe on a good day. That's not the same. It's not. It's not. And Dear King has a history of excellence at this level. So I know that both. I know Tutu Atwell was one of the best high school quarterbacks that m- many people have seen, myself included. That kid was dynamic in, at Miami Northwestern. My God. But I think that him transitioning to wide receiver and running the slot, especially with his height and his elite, elite speed. And I know that De'Ara King has a 97-yard touchdown return for a uh, or kickoff return for a touchdown when he was a freshman and they had him at wide receiver. I know, I know, I know. But that's two and a half inches of height difference, if not more. And I think that that matters. So you have a guy who's slightly smaller for the position, like an inch smaller than Russell Wilson versus a guy who's four inches shorter than Russell Wilson. You see what I'm saying? So like those that height makes a difference to me. And I'm going to say it's if they're about the same. Yeah, they're not about the same size. Yeah. But I mean, you're really talking five, seven and a half, five, eight versus five, ten, five, eleven almost. So that for me is where the difference lies in those two players. You have convinced uh, Tony. So he has responded back on the live chat that uh, point well taken. He's got it. Well, I mean, that, that, that's at least my viewpoint on it. And like, hey, we're free to disagree. I disagree with people online all the time. Somebody made an edit of uh, some jerseys that I did not necessarily think represented Miami well at all uh, and said, you know, hey, maybe you want to rethink those. He said, no, nah, I'm good. I said, okay, cool, bro. <laughs> Do your thing. That's, I mean, okay, you know. Uh, so we clearly disagree uh, on that. And if you still disagree, that's perfectly fine. And then, <laughs> Whoa. Oh, we saw that at the same time. <laughs> Junior Perry says he believes Nicosi Woo! Perry will be hey, Mark, the Mark, King in that one on starting first. position. We literally read that at the exact same time. <laughs> I am the captain. And the, the founding president. Absolutely. Of I'm the Nicole Perry fan I'm club. VP. I'm definitely VP. You know I'm what I mean? VP like, I've time. been driving this bus for a long time. I am <laughs> as high on Nicole Perry's talents and potential as anyone you will find. That being said, there is one reason that Derek King came to Miami. has to be the starting quarterback. There's not going to be a battle. There's not going to be a conversation. Number one in your programs and number one at the quarterback position is going to be De'Ara King, period. There's like, I, absent, an, and I have a wood table, so knock on wood, but absent an injury, I don't see, there is no possible way. That now, we have to also have this conversation, though, Cam, as Five Hive supporters. Yeah. He had his chance to take over and be the guy this past season. He had his chance, and I want to say it was a mixture of them okay. and him being hurt going out there because that pit and that – Virginia, he did have the game winner. I have to give it back. I've rewatched the season now with no emotion. I'm able to analyze what I'm watching. But all of those missed throws, UVA, Fair. them throwing him out there hurt against Pitt, they, it, it, really, it really soured the people who were – either on the fence or switching over uh, to the young man that has transferred yeah. out of our program. And it hurt to watch, man, because, I mean, when he broke and, and up the middle and scored versus UVA, I almost got kicked out the house. I was screaming so Because <laughs> I, I was just like, this it, 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 This is it. This is what I've been waiting on. Right. If you go back and you're watching and you put on your coaching cap and you say, maybe this game isn't even close if we make half of these throws. Oh, yeah. And I honestly, mean, it would have been, and that's the thing. It would have been like a Louisville game. Oh, you know it I mean? easily, easily. Because Louisville was operating with a very fine margin for error for Miami's offense. They're like, we're going to give you these two kinds of throws. And if you hit them, then you're going to like, you're going to blow us out. If you, if you can hit them, but if you can't, then it's Pittsburgh 2017 all over again. Correct. You know what I mean? And, or the rest of last – I don't even got to go over that far back. It's the rest of last season. It's FIU. It's Duke. It's these other games. Um, but 
you know, 15, Jaron Williams, I'll say his name, Jaron Williams, he came out on fire and he hit all them throws against Louisville. That didn't happen in these other games, you know, um, and he was injured. I think we can all say that he he was injured. He clearly had a shoulder thing. Now, he came back at the end of that Pittsburgh game um, and threw the winner to K.J. Osborne, did uh, Jaron Williams. That was great. I was not pleased by seeing the offense being dialed back in the way that it was for Perry for the rest of that game. And he didn't do any favors in that. You know what I mean? But it was almost like, you know, in 2003, after Miami fell down to Florida so bad, and then they were like, you know what, Brock Berlin, five one or uh, five five wide shotgun, varsity blues, oop de oop, just get it and throw it, and we're gonna win. Why? And but you did something similar with Nikosi against Virginia Tech, we almost came back in that game, but then you dial it back the next week, and I'm just like, why? Why would you? Like you saw what was successful, you saw Absolutely. that it worked. Absolutely. But then you automatically, your immediate thought is that the offense in that iteration working was the outlier, not the standard. Correct. But for why? Because of your intellectual superiority, because you want your version of an offense to work. But you saw that the offense you want to run with the player that you clearly want to run it didn't work. And then a different offense with a different guy with a different skill set and an infinitely stronger arm worked to great success why then would you try to fit the round peg in the, or square peg in the round hole with this quarterback with a different skill set to do that it just, I, I, uh, didn't make any sense didn't make any sense and I mean, it got to a point where we even started to say let's play the game as if we're down by 28 and we got to come back that's how we want Danny you know, to start the season and start every game hey Dan uh it's 28 on there all right, cool. Y'all go four, five wide. We got deep crossing. We got drags underneath. People magically wide open. Why? Because you played to what they're used to do. You could even run QB or uh, not even QB draw, but uh, you can run a draw play out of that. You know, you're going to have room for DJ Dallas or Cam Harris because they're going to find room. You had that uh, run against Virginia Tech, which should have been the game winner, but then you missed the extra point and it's tight and all that kind of crap. Um, you know what I mean? 